This is Christian Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV, and this is Journeyman John. And we're gonna be talking about what it takes to start a painting company. And I've got John here today. You wanna stay tuned for this video because he's the proud owner of BNK Painting. And John, uh, we're gonna be giving you, or you're gonna be giving us or them three tips on <laughs> starting and running a painting company. So stay tuned for this video. All right, John, so. You own BNK Painting now. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you haven't owned it for a long time, but nope. you've worked for BNK Painting for a lot of years. And I'm sure you've got some advice now. We've been talking about, this is our video series on starting and running a painting company. Mm -hmm. And I know you're a smer ver smery? Smery. <laughs> smery. Smery or comes from the old English. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Or very smart guys. So you have three tips that I think you want to share when it comes to starting or running a painting company. So yeah. what would be tip number one? Well, so tip number one, and this is something that I got from Chris, just working with him over the years and kind of watching how he was growing B&K painting prior to me taking it over. And that was using every, um, every touch point with the customer as a way to exceed their expectations. So uh, I know he's mentioned in a lot of his videos like the bid packet. Um, first off, even having a bid packet is a way to set yourself apart and exceed expectations. So here's an instance where everybody, if they're getting three bids, everybody's showing up, everyone's doing the thing, um, but if you're the guy that's leaving them more than just a tear-off sheet, if you're leaving them something that helps show that you're professional, that you know what you're doing, you have a process, you have systems in place, that, that this isn't your first rodeo, that's going to set you apart from everybody else. So um, you have a bid packet, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When you give a bid for an exterior paint job, how many pages is your bid packet approximately? You know, our bid packet right now is right around 10 pages. So 10 pages. Yeah. And what, what would be two key elements of that bid packet that really separates you from the competition? You know, some of it, uh, you know, I, I'm, I try to be realistic, right? Like not everybody's going to look at this bid packet and read through all of the details, but it does list some things like, hey, here's what's included, here's what's not included, um, here's the process that we're going to be going through to, to complete an average exterior project. Um, but some of the things that I think are really good are give a preview of, of who is going to be showing up and doing the job. Make them feel comfortable with, with who they're going to go into business with. Because um, I'll even have this conversation over the phone with people. This is a relationship, right? So I need to trust you. You need to trust me. We want to make you feel comfortable with this decision moving forward. And if it's not with us, totally fine. But we're going to do what we can to, to help you trust us. So in this electronic age now, nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, you can actually email bid packages. You're running your own painting company. Do mm -hmm. you hand deliver the bid packet or do you email it to customers? We email the bid packet to everybody. Occasionally we'll have an old timer who says, what's email? Or I don't do that email <laughs> thing. The, the government's trying to track me down. It happens, what we'll do is we'll print off and then we'll either mail it or depending where they're at, we'll hand deliver a package at that point. But, but it's nowadays, people almost assume that it's just going to be emailed to them. I, I know yeah. years ago, I think you got a lot of pushback about getting things emailed out, yeah. but, but now it's, I think everyone just knows like, yeah, that's, that's normal. It's pretty standard and, and accepted. If I think, you know, if you're, <laughs> saves a ton of time. Yeah. I get the business being K painting is very well established, has a really good reputation. If you're just starting your painting company and you're not getting a lot of bids, um, I, I know you're probably, how many bids are you writing a week? A lot. A lot, I'm sure uh, a lot. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, it's a lot. So the, it, e it the, fluctuates, the email but. works well, but if you're, if say you're just getting two or three bids a week and you really need the jobs, it's probably a good idea to print them up and hand deliver them to the customer or would you still email them? You know, there's a part of me that would still would still email them, but I, I think I would address the the actual bid process a little bit different because even though we're a very well established company, there are a lot of people that are still coming to us just because they search for you know painters in Boise on the internet. Like they don't know us, they don't know anybody that we've done work for. They're just pulling up the first three names that come up online. And, and in some ways, you're like a brand new company to them. So yeah, even though you can say, hey, we've been here for 17 years, 
they don't know that. They yeah. don't care that you've been here 17 years. Like you've still got to do do your due diligence to say to to convince them that you're you're the right people for them. Yeah, the the estimate, the bid packet is one way to set yourself apart and really sell yourself. Mm -hmm. You have that opportunity once you leave from talking to the customer on the phone or meeting with the customer, they're eventually gonna sit down. They're gonna evaluate your bid packet compared to everybody else's, and it's your opportunity to sell yourself. Yeah. And so the bid packet is very important. So um, thank you for sharing that, John. Yeah. So what would be another tip that you would have to share with our audience that wants to learn, wants to start their own painting company? Yeah. Say a guy that works for somebody and he's like, you know what, I just wanna go out and work for my own now. Yeah, so you know, this kind of segues off of what you were just saying with, you know, maybe there's a difference between an established and a, and a new company. And I, like I said, I think being able to sell with confidence is key. And so not everybody's gonna be a referral in, not everybody's going to, you're not always gonna have these glowing recommendations from friends or family who uh, are going to be putting you forward. And so when you're showing up, you, they don't know you from Adam. Right. Yeah. And so if you can show up at a job or at a at a bid, at an estimate and and you're not desperate, if you're confident, if you, uh, you know, what do they say in baseball? Like they get mad at those guys that like flip the bat and dance over home plate and they say, oh, you got to act like you've been there before. I think when the sales piece comes to it, like that's good advice. You yeah. should act like you've been there, yeah. that this is what you do, that you're not desperate for this job. Yeah, and I think that was one of the things when I started my painting company, I had no experience painting. I was new to it, but I approached every job went in and, and I was confident in what I could do mm -hmm. at the point. And I would just sell myself on what I could do and, and be confident that, you know, hey, if. I couldn't do a task that I was confident in myself that I would be able to learn mm -hmm. and possibly, you know, learn on that job itself. But, you know, sell yeah. with confidence, I think, is a very good point. Well, and that confidence is going to serve you, too, because no, you always get into trouble when you get pushed around by a client, right? So if yeah. you've got a client who starts saying, well, but I want you to do it like this and I want you to do it like this and I want you to and I want you to use these things like and they start acting like they're the professionals to be able to stand up and say, uh, hold, hold on, we do it like this and we do it like this for this reason. We do it like this and we do it like this for this reason. Even that stuff communicates a certain confidence where they're going to go, oh, th this guy knows what he's doing versus what's the opposite of that? Oh yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. We can get you in in the next two weeks here. I totally, right. we'll do, you want that? Absolutely, you've yeah. got it. Like there's, there's a certain desperateness that yeah. people know, they, they can sense that. And selling with confidence, part of uh, doing so is learning your skill in trade. And, mm -hmm. and I know you've done a lot of reading and studying when it comes to the, the art and, and craft of painting. I've done a lot of research and studying. When I don't know something, I read about it and study it so I can answer questions You know, when I'm approached with certain questions. And so how do you handle if you're confident in your bidding estimate skills and the customer says, you know, before you leave, they say, you know, well, so how much is this going to cost me? Can you tell me right now what it's going to cost? What do you do and what do you say? I always tell them no. I, I tell them I don't like giving ballpark numbers because I, I want to go back. I need to crunch the numbers. I need to, to figure out how much materials it's going to take, what the, the time frame that it is, and, and go from there. Tell them, you know, we can get a bid out to you really fast, usually in the next day here. Um, but I, I don't like doing the the, the in-person thing. Yeah, I've, I don't know if I've um, maybe once or twice in my entire career, I've actually spit out a number to somebody, you know, right there. I always like to go back and sit down, you know, with my notes and talk with my wife who was part of the estimating process and come up with a number and then send it back to them. Um, don't ever be put yourself on the, on the spot and throw out a number because there's a lot of things um, that could come up negative, I guess, well, when it comes to that. And I found every time I do it, or even if I ballpark it for them and give them like a thousand dollar range of what it's gonna be, and then I go crunch the numbers, like I, this is my personality. I don't do well in that moment coming up with the numbers. Right. Like I need to go, I need to think through, okay, what's this project actually gonna take and calculate it. And then yeah. I can feel really confident with, look, this is the number. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, gorge you. 
I'm not trying yeah. to underbid anything here. Like this is what it has to be. And if you don't like the price, that's fine. Like yeah. I'm okay with you not being okay with the right. price because yeah. I know I did my work to come up with a price that's a good price. So John, we've talked about a couple things. One <laughs> other thing I'd like to talk about in, um, is hiring employees. And I have a lot of experience hiring employees. I hired you quite a few years ago, and Many now months. you've got um, a bunch of experience. You helped, were involved in the hiring process before you owned BNK Painting, and mm -hmm. now you're on your own, and mm -hmm. you've hired you know, a handful of employees. You know, can you give us some pointers on you know, what it takes to get good quality help, I guess, is what we want to say. You know, I think when it comes to getting good quality help, um, good people know other good people. Right? That's a good point. Like, um, if you've got guys on your team who are good, good team members, um, they're likely to know other people who are like them, right? right. They're going to hang out with the same kind of people. And if you can create the kind of environment where it's appealing for them to actually go to their friend who maybe has an office job and say, oh my gosh, dude, you've got to get out of that scam and you've got to come like this is way better way cooler we we either have more fun or it's more satisfying or however you decide to communicate that to your team like that's a that's the best recruiting tool you can have i think character is a big deal right, right. like you you should hire for for character and motivation not for skill set because yeah. we we can teach all the skills yeah i was pretty big on that and i um i kind of you know, hired guys that had a lot of um, skills, and then I hired guys that didn't have a lot of skills. And so I had experience both ways, and I really like to hire guys with no skills at all. That way I can just train them the way we do things and how I wanted them to do it, and then that was just the way they knew and understood how to do it, and there was never any fight and pushback, I guess. Yeah, and I think the objection that a lot of guys have with that is, but then I'm gonna have to babysit them, and it's gonna take forever for me to get them up there, but I mean, just stop for a minute, take a breath, it's okay. Think about it, like, you're gonna start these guys off, they're gonna make, what, 12, 13, 14, 15, wherever you're at, whatever that starting range is, how long realistically does it take for them to be a, a break-even member of the team? Yeah. Two weeks? I think, two, yeah, two weeks, three weeks. If, um, if you're, like, intentional about, yeah. you know, teaching them and you're not one of those... I mean, we both grew up in construction, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> there, there are guys that would just razz you, or you're the new guy, so go fill up this bucket with air. Like, like if you're actually trying to make them a piece of the team, right. like... I think in two weeks they can at least break even and you're not losing money. Yeah, and I think um, with guys just with a little bit of mechanical skills and stuff and, and willingness to learn, I think like in three months they were, be, they were very valuable members of the team mm -hmm. making the company money. And we, I mean, we would literally, I mean, two months in, three months in, we would have guys with spray guns in their hands. And right. these are guys right out of high school. Um, and just starting college or guys a couple years in college, we had a lot of experience hiring students and making them effective members of our team very quickly. Yeah. And some of that is just having the confidence just to throw a brush in their hand and then having the confidence that, you know, we're gonna teach them these skills and yeah, they may take off and um, start their own painting company and, and be your competition, but it was never a worry of ours. But that's where those two things come together, right? Like if you're making this the kind of place where your A-team guys wanna bring on more A-team guys, they're not gonna leave, yeah. right? Like if you do a good job of creating an environment where you're, you're not just the boss, you're looking at them as the whole person, right? And you're trying to take care of them as a whole person. They're, they're a lot less likely to leave you down the road for what, a couple more bucks an hour right. or, you know? Yeah. So you, you've had a, um, some experience, you've hired some new guys. Could you give us, you know, three places where um, people could search to find employees? And a lot of people um, starting their own painting company have no idea even where to find guys other than 
throwing up a flyer in a local paint store? I mean, you could always throw up a flyer in your local paint store, you know, but the thing is, is you're just, all you're getting are the guys that are gonna jump from one ship to another for another buck an hour, and they're just gonna jump your ship to another place for another buck an hour. Like, that's the kind of guys that you're, you're looking at getting like that. I, to me, I think, one, I would, you know, if you have anyone on your team, I would be asking them if they know anyone. If you don't have anyone on your team and you're just starting out, then you have friends, right? If you have friends that have a kid that's maybe just graduating out of high school, um, surely you know someone who has a kid in the basement that they want to stop playing video games and like actually go out and get to work. Like that's not a bad place to start, right? That gets you, you can kind of um, get into it, get started, make some mistakes, but, but get somebody in there so that you can start in this process. Right. I think look for places where you're already getting great service, right? So like if you go to a, a coffee shop or restaurant or something like that, and, and there are people that you know, uh, like an assistant manager who's, who's sitting there, um, they, they open and close the store, they give you great customer service, they already manage um, other clients, maybe schedules, things like that, and they're probably not getting paid very well, yeah. right? How hard is it to look at them and say, oh my gosh, I've got something so much better for you. Like, why don't you come try this thing out? You don't have to deal with all of these things that you're dealing with now. You, you could do these other things instead. Yeah. I think that, that's a good, yeah. Yeah, so you got some employees, um, you know, Lucas, where'd Lucas come from? So Lucas came from Facebook, and that's, yeah. a, that's a place you can throw up an ad. Um, you're just gonna do more weeding, yeah. right? Because yeah. I think you throw up an ad and you get well, depending on your market, probably yeah. lots of responses yeah. and not all of them are great, but that's a place to start. So I hired you. How did you find out about B&K painting? I was, I saw an ad on a college billboard. I uh, utilized the college, local colleges. Yeah. So um, Billboard's one of those cork things where they, they have those flyers, these paper things, and they school. staple them up on. That was yeah. back in the old school. I don't days. know if they do that anymore. Apparently um, there are websites, right? Your, um, <laughs> the college that you went to and graduated from, they still do that. So well, yeah, but they will take a PDF. It's not saying much. Um, they're, they're still old school. They are. But most of the will. universities now use um, a, a computer program that everybody gets on and um, you know, puts in their um, notice for hiring and then the students get on there and they can really see it almost nationwide. So yeah. um, Facebook and the colleges were you know, yeah. two great places. And especially as a painter, that's a great place to pick up summer help, right? Yeah. If you're just looking, hey, I want some guys on for the summer, there are some guys that are looking for summer work while, while they're out of school and, and that's a great spot. Um, probably a, a key is you want to get in early. You should probably be starting looking for them around uh, March or April, because if you start in June or May um, looking for help, they've all probably got summer jobs already. So where did Captain Zach come from? Captain Zach was a friend of a guy that was working for us. Now, unfortunately, the first guy didn't work out, but we got to get Zach out of it. So. Yeah. so thank you very much for hanging out with us here, talking about how to start a painting company. Thanks, John, for um, sharing some tips and tricks. Um, you're the proud owner of B&K Painting. You know, uh, I mean, what if they want you to come, you know, paint their house? You, um, how can they get a hold yeah, of you? Yeah, you can uh, hit us up on, we're on Instagram, BNK Painting, um, or uh, our website's paintidaho.com. You actually have your own Instagram now. I do. I'm not it? nearly as active as this guy. No, you got to post something. I know I got to post. I what, know. It's on the to-do list. What's your Instagram? Journeyman.john. Journeyman.john. Yeah. So you can find him there. So yeah. if some people want to you know, give you a shout out or ask you a question, yeah. you know, need some help, I don't know if you answer yeah. or not. Maybe Every you five want. days, at least, I'll jump on and <laughs> post something and maybe answer some questions. And... If, if you got any questions or comments about this video, just leave them down in the comment section below. I'm sure maybe once a year, John might take a look at it and <laughs> answer a question. I do my best. <laughs> He's so busy with his painting company now. Um, I don't know how he would even be able to answer your question, but we'll try our hardest. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up. Give him a thumbs up. Please. And, um, you know, if you want more videos, topics like this, the business of painting, just let us know down below and um, give us a topic. Give us a subject to talk about. We'll see you on our next video.
out. You know, we really uh, messed this up. We should have had like smoking jackets and like a, and like a pipe in like masterpiece theater, <laughs> little fire going in the background.